Hi, I'm Mike Baird, world-known studio musician for the stars, and if you're into gear like I am, you're in the right place. Welcome to Mike's Drum Covey. Hey, covers. I have a vast collection of gear, but the cubby's about the gear I use the most. And I'm also going to review new gear that I don't have in my collection. And at the end, I'm going to share a story, so you're going to want to stay tuned. In the meantime, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button, send me a comment, give me a thumbs up, or do all of them. Anyway, let's get to the gear at hand. The DW Stainless. Okay, this drum came to me by the way of a phone call I made to my drum rep, Scott Garrison at DW at the time. I told him I was going to a session and they wanted like an 80s vibe. Even though I, you know, have a ton of drums, I figured maybe there's something that, that he'd have that I'd like or that I could borrow. Scott mentioned this stainless. So I went down, picked up the drum the same day. This was one of those drums I literally took out of the box, put it on the stand, put some duct tape on it, detuned it a little bit, and it was absolutely perfect. I actually have a funny story about this drum uh, that I used on that session, uh, and I'll share it with you at the end of the video. It's a beautiful drum and likes tunings up and down. It's really one of my favorites, and I use it a lot. So here's the uh, throw-off, the classic DW lug, and the butt end. Hey, welcome back. If anybody's wondering how much the drum weighs, 11 pounds, 13 ounces. Okay, the story. Here we go. Double session, six hours. I get there, 14 songs, but there's charts, so that's good. We get through the whole entire day. Everything's great. Sounds are awesome. The last song's pretty involved. It's got drum changes all the time. Not not odd bars, but just drum grooves that are, go from one section to another section. And that would have been fine, but the chart was all messed up. I mean, it was like in the weeds. I should have just actually rewritten the chart myself, but I didn't. So there you go. Anyway, I finally get the chart right. We do a pass. It's awesome. Go in the booth. Everybody's high-fiving. Yeah, it's all. let's listen down. We listen down. There's one little section that I'm not that happy with. I mean, it's good. I just thought it could be better. So and I asked them, you know, can we punch this one section? It, it, it's not that it's not good. I think I can make it better. And they were like, sure. And the engineer was great. Great sounds, like I said, and cans were awesome. He goes, yeah, I'll punch you in. So we figure out the punch before and we figure out the punch after. He goes, I'll get you two bars. I'll give you two bars before the punch. I'll give you four bars after the punch. And I said, I'll just keep playing. I go back out in the room. I check all the tunings, snare, toms, everything. I look down at my cell phone because I want to make sure I'm not going to be late. And we're all good. We got plenty of time. <clears throat> and we do it. We do a pass. And the pass is great. I go in. He goes, I'm just going to solo the drums. We'll go before and after. Just make sure we're all good. We listen down. It's flawless. It's really cool. So I go back out into the room to grab my bass drum pedal and my stick bag, go to get my cell phone, and there are three tension rods laying on the floor on this carpet that I was on from the bottom head. So did it happen before? Did it happen after? Engineers, don't get paranoid. <laughs> hey, it all matched perfect. It was all great. So that's the story. So we come towards the end. Uh, the cubby and if you like what you've seen and heard today hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up send me a comment if you like so as we always say and, that's it. and we'll see you in a minute